Good afternoon. Well, I've been busy as a one-armed paper hanger with the crabs for the last couple of days. I've been just so damn busy, I can just barely keep up with answering the comments. Since I have my comments set on approve all, I have to go in and approve it, then go back to the video and answer the question. I spend sometimes 45 minutes or so answering the question because I'm a hunt and peck typer and I read slow because of my eyesight. Oh. I've been working out here for two days and I haven't been videoing because I've been just too damn busy. Uh, ass and legs, I had to get it out of the way. I'm doing electrical today. Actually, I've been doing electrical this is the second day. Oh, I just got to running 12 Romex, 12 2 with ground. Uh, I got the air conditioner on in here, so I'll catch you on the inside. And then. It wasn't easy dr drilling through uh, triple two by fours. And the reason this shed is made this way is because it was made with cutoffs that I bargained with at Home Depot. Of course, I should have spent a little money and put a double header up here, but that's beside the point. Running 12 two with ground all the way through, all the way down to the workshop, uh, the bench equipment, and then the wire runs down into here, and this is an easy doing, for the um, the bench. Um, I was going to put two outlets in here, but these are so hard for my, my eyesight to see. I come a few times with backstabbing these outlets. I don't like doing that. I like going around the screws. But I had a, such a hell of a time making the loop here because of my rotten eyesight, even though I have magnifiers and everything. So what I did is I got the outlets here and we're going to do is I'm going to just have an outlet strip like I had in my old shop to plug into here. I've got a couple of them and I can plug different stuff in here. The same with this. So then this continues on down under the bench, comes up here and around and to where the air conditioner is going to be plugged in. And this is all on a, on a 20 amp circuit. There's only one circuit coming out on this shed. When I get it all hooked up, I can be in this shed and not have to turn the lights on in the other shed. And I got the lighting wire. I found some 14-2 for my lighting wire to go up to my four foot, probably a four foot fluorescent or something. Those seem to give the best lighting. I'll probably put a small one here or something. So if I don't uh, watch a lot of your videos, you'll have to excuse me because I usually there's a few of my people that watch my videos and comment on them, and uh, I comment. I've just been so damn busy that I just haven't had a chance. Huh. Put that on years ago. Anyways, um, this is my electrical box, my first one that I built back in the 70s. And... Um, Stuff that I don't use all that often in it. So, I got a lot of work ahead of me. So, like I say, I haven't been uh, doing too much. So, we'll come back on this video after I get a little more organization in there. I got to take this vacuum cleaner. Now that I got all the drilling and uh, wood boring and everything all done now, I got to vacuum that whole bench out in there so I can start putting gear in there when I get it. All right, here it is a couple days later. And I want to show you, I got my leader LBO 526, 60 megahertz uh, oscilloscope. I had sold it to a buddy of mine for 30 bucks. He used it at work. He wanted to give it back to me. I wouldn't take it back free. I insisted he take 30 bucks for it because that's what he gave me. He gave me 30 bucks for it. And I, get, I paid him, I said, well, at least I want to pay you the 30, so I did that. Now, as you can see, I started organizing things a little bit here. 
going through my toolbox and stuff. And this is my little um, NLS 215 scope. I kept that. I kept that in the house. I had to charge it up. And the uh, leader scope. I have the book on it and everything and the probes. But I got to move all this out of here now. Because what I got to do is, like it or not, I got to get this stuff out of here. What I do is to put a shelf right here out so I can take this scope and put it on there because if the scope goes up here, this is the box for the uh, NLS um, little scope. Um, I, if I put it up here, I'm not going to be able to read it. Here's the book on the uh, on the leaderscope that I had gotten offline. There's the probes to it. So I can't put the scope up here. It's too high. I'm going to be sitting down here. So there's going to be a shelf here, but it's not going to be at this point because I need to work here. But I figure probably halfway this toolbox is going to have to go to the wall, which means it's going to be uh, larger, uh, longer workbench probably. But what I got to do now is to run the 14 wire for the lighting. I've already got, I got 12 coming in uh, for the circuit, and then I'm just using 14 to come out. This is live, so I capped it off. Um, there'll be a, a junction box up here and my four foot, four foot fluorescent, which I was going to put here. Instead, I bought a LED light and I'm going to be putting that in. So I got to get this scope out of here because I'm not going to go doing a lot of uh, banging and everything else and drilling and everything and getting this crap, getting this all crapped up. So I gotta pull all this stuff out. I can't do it today. This is Sunday, we're going out, and it's hot anyways. It's a terrible, terrible summer. It's been awful. All right, what I had done is that wiring that I got in there, 25 feet of 12 tool with ground, the outlet boxes, the outlets and everything else, and everything, it was $45 almost. Today I spent another 45 so there goes my e eBay budget. So I won't be able to look for any test equipment because I spent everything. I have to have good lighting and what I did is went to Home Depot and they have fluorescent lights now. They don't sell them with the bulbs anymore so you got to buy them separately. Well I was looking over and the LED bulbs are much better. But they're $55 and on, on up. I got this one on clear on uh, on sale for $39. It's a four foot, uh, 2400 lumens. Now they had one for $55 over there. That's 4,000 lumens. I need a lot of light. But this is an LED hard wire, which is fine with me. So I've got the box. I picked up another box so I can wire it in. But what we're going to do right now is I want to just take this out of the package and look it over. And temporarily I may uh, just stick it up there and put a cord on it. But I'm not sure yet. If I'm going to go through all that trouble I should just put it up right. Alright, uh, that's going to be easy enough to do. Kind of thin wires. But I guess that's okay. Made to go is the box I bought. Made to go right on the on the junction box. So theoretically the box can go up on the ceiling and this can be mounted to it. But what I'm going to do now is to just temporarily stick a cord on that. I always like to test it out. So we're going to put some wire nuts on there and put a cord on it. Just to try it out. And it's got a diffuser on the front. It already didn't take long to get it dirty. Picked up all this crap from the bench here. So, I'll have to look and see how to open that up without breaking it. I'm great at doing that. 
plastic things I have it I have a problem with opening without snapping and things off but all right we'll come back on the video after I get this uh, cord on here I don't want to try it out inside the shop all right I got these extension cords these are 16 wire 16 3 no 16 with the ground uh, at the yard sale I got three of these I don't know how long they are I never opened them up they're like in brand new condition they've been in my shed but temporarily we're just going to use one of these to hook it to this here it's not going to be a permanent type of thing oh, we got to make sure we're in the right groove here uh, just to test the light out I always like to test things I don't like to have to put it all up in there only to find out it's defective so what we're going to do is temporarily with some wire nuts putting this on, it didn't strip this enough this don't even look like uh, 16 yeah just barely barely 16, it dragged a little bit Well, maybe not. Maybe it's 18. We just want a little more stripped out here. We're in the shade. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this because it's not now it's in the sun. Some wire nuts here. We're not doing any more today than this because I got a major cleanup in that in that shop. I got a major cleanup in that shop to do. We'll just stick a wire nut on that. A wire nut. Wire nuts. I'm nuts enough. Normally now, the way I do things is I put the wire nut on. I won't do this on this because this is a temporary. And then I use Scotch 33 electrical tape. I tape from here right to here. That gives, especially on the hot wire. And then I always use metal boxes. Very rarely will I use a plastic box. I don't like them. Now we won't go to the extreme of taping this this time. These are these will be all right. But if this was going into a junction box, when this gets put up, all these connections here will be taped from the blue area down to about here. It's just a good practice to do that. If you put a wire nut on correctly, you should be able to pull it and not get it, not pull it off. I mean. This wire isn't all that heavy. If you really crank on it, you'll pull it off. But if this was solid number 14 or number 12 wire, you put a wire nut on there, you're not going to pull that off. You can pull your guts out. If, it's, if you can pull it off, you didn't put it on right or didn't use the right size. All right, let's go in the shed. All right, I put the lights out in the shed. That's nice and bright. Well, it's an LED. Wow. That's good. Look at the light I got. Now this, I could have got one for $55. That would have been uh, uh, 4,000 lumens. I would have liked that, but I didn't have $55. I had $45 on me. It left me $2 left for a damn cup of coffee today. Well, coffee don't, I don't pay $2 for coffee, but you know what I'm saying. So. This going right over the workbench. That's nice. All right, I got the. I didn't put the lights back on here again. What I'm going to do, I'll set this here for now because we're not doing anything today. We're not going to use this cord, of course. But this is just for test. We got to do is we got to run that 14 wire, which is not new. Well, let me put the light on. All right, that wire right there. That's 14 two with ground. 
That's old wire, old Romex that I've had for many years. Nothing wrong with it. And we're gonna, we're gonna do. I want to step on the light and break it. We got it temporarily up here. What we're gonna do is, we come out of here. This is the junction box, properly terminated. We're gonna run the wire down and, and you know, staple properly over to here. This light here is on the main shed. So when I turn the main shed on, this comes on, because originally this shed was a storage shed. So it didn't need to have its own switch, but now it's going to. So I don't need to have this light on. So if I need to come in here to do some work, I don't need to go into the main shed, turn the light on, and um, have those lights burning in there. I got like 100 water in there, and I got some... Uh, L uh, CFLs and an LED in there, but I don't need that on. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this over to here. The shop light will be right in this bay here. I just got to figure a way to mount it. That's not a problem. I can probably put a board from here over to here, similar to what I did here uh, in this area. So this will give me the light right directly down on the bench. All right. Now. When that's done, the junction box that I showed you that's going to go on the back of that light, there'll be a wire coming down here, that'll be for the switch, and there'll be a wall switch right there by the door. So, then all I got to do is flip the lights on in here. Not a problem that we can do that, I think. So, this way, this shop will be independent of the main shed. So, this outlet is switched along with this light from the main shed. All this yellow wire is 12-2 with ground, which I showed you, is the 20 amp circuit. The whole shed is on 20 amps. I don't know how to weld. I got rid of my welder, so I didn't bother. When I did put the shed together, I ran uh, 12 wire to the shed. We don't need to run 10 because we're not doing anything heavier than this air conditioner here, which runs just fine. So, the first thing I got to do when I get to this job is I got to clean this stuff out, get this light up here, and I hope I got enough wire. I'll check after because I don't have any more 14. You don't need to waste 12 on a light. Not, it's just a waste of money. You don't need it. 14 is fine for lighting. So, we're coming out here, and we're getting that light. When you get that light in here, then I can make a shelf over here, and I don't know about the bench yet. I'm not sure whether I continue with that. I rounded this corner off. So, if I was to continue to the bench right to the wall, which would be good, uh, I got a problem here because I rounded this off. I might just put the shelf here and, and call it good. And then, I want to get one of the magnifiers on an arm, but not the one that mounts on the floor. I need, don't want anything on the floor. I have something that will clip on, the, on here, or I can hook it on the wall. That's not a problem. And, I, and a light. So right over the bench, so I'm not shading myself from the overhead light. But see, the overhead light would be right here. So the way this is... It's on this joist here, so the light would be, in effect, the center of the light would be right here. So it's going to give this whole bench illumination, four foot long. And the way I'm going to have it is the light is going to be more near that way rather than to be centered on the ceiling so I can get coverage. I'll play around with that later. So that's all I'm going to do today. I just wanted to... Uh, show you what I'm, I've got to do here and we're going to set this right here well all this is going to be taken out I just don't want this light to get stepped on and broken I think it's I think, you know what that's metal or not I think it is I think that's metal but this is plastic here and then I'll have to look at the instructions 
I guess there's two screws here, so I guess the cap comes off and you can take out the diffuser. Because you need to get in the back here and mount the the, the, <coughs> the junction box. Not a problem, I've done many of these. Not this type, but I've done a lot of lighting in my 72 years. That's it for today, folks. It's too damn hot to do anything. Hello everybody, how you doing today? Well, it's a different day, but whether or not uh, it's the same video or not, I don't know. It all depends on how I can put the video clips together and how long they take and so forth. I try to keep my videos under 30 minutes at the very most. Um, got everything done on the wiring and the lights. Um, just cleaning up now. And here's the new light. Nice and bright. What I did is I made an extension to the bench. Can't work over here, so I figured since I rounded this corner, I'll just recess the next one in. I was going to put the scope up here, but I didn't want to put a support from here down. This is... Uh, this is like 5 eighths plywood. It's not three quarters. Um, didn't want to cut up that three quarter to do this little shelf. But I could put, in the future, I could put the scope up there. So, anyways, we got everything done. We got a, a wall switch right here. And the main shed can be turned off, and I can still work out here without running all those lights. Now, things are in a disarray right now. I'm just trying to get organized. So I just finished the uh, light today. Early this morning I worked on it. So we got everything done. And I decided to take out those long objects that were in the corner here and stuck them in the main shed. I can't even move around in the main shed. It's unbelievable. And that's the whole reason why I built this for storage, but well, this is the extent of the storage right here and right down here. This is cooler we want to keep. That was my mother-in-law's and father-in-law's little cooler and it's the only cooler we got. We got rid of all the others when we had a, the last cookout. So um, I have to have that corner for this stuff, but that's okay. Now this will be out of the way and shoved over here once I'm done vacuuming. So I can um, get everything organized and I have a little working space. Now, I did a lot of thinking on this I was going to have shelves here, but I need this area, you know, if there's something good size to stand up on end. I have a shelf coming out like this, I'm not going to be able to do anything. So, primarily, all my work will be done right here. And that should be sufficient. So, you're talking a 48 inch bench. Almost because I'm coming up to this. This overhangs a little bit purposely. This hangs. This is exactly 24 and a half inches from here to here. Now I'd purposely put it that way so that I can have room for the big scope or any other equipment that I might want to acquire. Other equipment would be put up here eventually as I acquire them, and that'll be a while. So some of that stuff can be up here, like power supply uh, and stuff like that can sit up on this shelf. And if need be, power supply could sit up here. The scope don't necessarily have to be there. It could be down here. So I think we're, we're getting somewhere, folks. Shut off the fan here. We don't need the AC today. It's... Pretty warm, but not overwhelming. 
So I'm ready to knock off. It's about five o'clock in the evening now. So that concludes this portion of the um, very small workshop. What we're going to do next, I think, who knows? Thank you for watching. Have a good night, good day, good morning, good evening, or whatever the case may be. Did you know that the human brain contains 78% water? So don't call somebody an airhead. Call them a waterhead.